And welcome back, everyone, to the Jenna Jillian Podcast. Dink, 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 dink. Talking about some uh, cool shit today that everyone wonders every day of their life. <laughs> or maybe they don't. I don't know. We do. We recently well, yeah. found out. It's, it's cool. It's, this episode is brought to you by Ring Video Doorbell System. Guys, Ring Video Yay. Doorbell System right here. We love ours. It is the dopest. There is a home burglary every 13 seconds. Don't be a victim. Okay, guys, the Ring Video Doorbell System has been proven to stop burglaries before they happen. They have uh, camera monitoring right to your phone. It's pretty incredible. Right now, you guys can get up to $150 off the Ring of Security Kit by going to ring.com. Slash Jenna Julian. It's also brought to you by Texture. Texture is the new way to read magazines, guys. Uh, you get it all on your phone on the Texture app. Uh, tons and tons of magazine choices curated right on your phone for you or your tablet. Really awesome way to read your favorite magazines. Right now, you can get a free trial with Texture by going to texture.com slash Jenna Julian. That's texture.com slash Jenna Julian. Thank, Thank you, you to our sponsors. More on them later. Okay. So, all right, Julie. First of all, can we sidetrack for one second? I know you talked about it in your vlog, and I talked about it on my Snapchat. But people were freaking out at me the other day because you I looked s- really cute. I said way. I wanted to shave my eyebrows, and so I did. I shaved half my eyebrow, the outside half, because mm-hmm. I just wanted to make a different tail shape. It's not even the first time I've done it. And people were like DMing Julian and DMing Rome and like tweeting at Rome, like, "Is Jenna okay?" Like thinking I went full Britney Spears. Yeah. I just well, wanted a different tail shape, fam, you know? I think I'm, they came out cute. They're purple I'm, right now. I'm being perfectly honest. I'm in that party. What party? I, like, when I saw that picture, like, people were tweeting at me. I was like, what are you? What is she doing? Yeah, like, Julian I'm, was downstairs. Because I've never even heard of that. Like, I didn't know. It's just something I didn't know about. Yeah, some people shave their whole eyebrow. Yeah. I just didn't know about it. So I saw, I, I'm getting DM'd. Is Jenna okay? Is Jenna okay? I'm like, about, what are you talking about? Yeah, she's fine. She's upstairs doing her makeup. The cute. Um, but you look cute, and I like it, and I like the purple. Thanks. I think it's fun and exciting, and Marble needs to shut his mouth. Marble! Marble! No, he's Don't get got, son. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm fine. My eyebrows are fine. But thank you for your concern. Thank you for your concern. She didn't go Britney Spears. <laughs> I didn't go Britney Spears. So, what happens after you die? That's what we want to talk about today. That's what we want to talk about. But not like in a morbid way. Like, yeah. we just wanted to look up some theories and... Yeah, and just kind of like blow our own minds. Yeah. So I, I mean, went... I have heard of some... Yeah, and uh, so have well, I. Okay, well, so were you raised religiously at all? Was I raised yeah. religiously? No. So you weren't taught, like, anything about what happens after you die? or Not like really. your grandparents? Not or really. Do, does your family have any specific traditions about burying people or cremating people? Or Nothing. sending them off into a Viking ship and lighting it on fire with a bow and arrow into the ocean? Well, no. Nothing specific, honestly. And you know that. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. You know, I've been to multiple uh, funerals, some of my family, and there's not, as as long as I know, as far as I know, like there's no certain theme or or practice or religious um, way of doing it. But I know that a lot of people and families have certain ways because of their religion and tradition and whatnot. Um, But we really just kind of wanted to talk about like the different theories of like literally what happens when yeah. you die. Well, like, I was just asking next? you maybe what your personal theory is, if you had one or if you were brought up with one. Like right now, if you were to ask me what, what I think happens? Well, I don't know. I was just more asking, I guess, what you were brought up or taught by your family. To be honest, there there isn't something that I can remember that I was taught specifically. Mm-hmm. I you? was taught heaven and hell. Okay. Because of church. Yeah. Literal just hell. Yeah. Yeah, that's about it. Yeah, I mean, I, I honestly, I would say that I was taught that, but that's not from being raised religiously. It's just from, like, watching movies, mm. <laughs> you know? Like, mm-hmm. that's kind of what you see mm-hmm. and stuff. Um, anyway, we I'll probably have a better understanding of, of what I believe after we go through some of these Let's series. Let's do it. All right. right. I'm excited. I am excited, too. We got a lot of these uh, from a source too. called whatculture.com. There was a list. It was really helpful. Um, and, all right, let's start at the bottom. No, let's start at the top. The universe brain theory. So that theory is that the universe is a brain. The whole universe is just one brain. And every single person in the universe or every single thing or person sentient uh, is just a cell inside the brain. And once that brain cell dies, like a person dies, it gets excreted out of the brain. <laughs> like you, a, like you, an, you get excreted? Yeah, like a dead brain cell. 
Because you have lose cells all the time. Like your cells die right? all the time. So when you die, you get where excreted. Where do they go? Excreted. What does that mean? You get pushed out. But into matter can't be created or destroyed. So where does it go? I'm not. It's not put. It's not destroyed. It's excreted. It's de- it's moved away from the brain. But Probably if the whole universe is the brain, then where does it go? Outside the universe. But that doesn't exist if the universe is the brain. If the universe is a brain, the the brain exists in some sort of. What's if the universe outside is a, of the universe? That's what I'm saying. Like maybe it's a, another world or another universe or another. I don't know. I'm not buying that one. I'm not buying that one at all. Well, you're just a brain cell. You don't have. <laughs> you don't get to buy anything. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't like that one either. I don't like that. That one. one's kind of whatever. But you know, we're just getting started. So calm the fuck down, everyone. Right. Uh, the reincarnation theory. I'm sure everyone has heard of this one. Mm-hmm. Uh, your consciousness leaves your body when you die mm-hmm. and moves somewhere else in the universe. Mm-hmm. You could be reincarnated, reincarnated as a human, an alien, a sentient ocean of water uh, on Earth what? or elsewhere. I've never heard that. That you could be reincarnated as a sentient ocean of water. Mm-hmm. No. It's science, yeah. So you're saying that oceans have souls? I'm not. I'm not. Or I'm, I'm literally just reading the theory. Okay, no, keep reading. <laughs> no, that. Uh, and then it was like you could be uh, a human, an alien, uh, a whole planet. You could be reincarnated as a fly, <laughs> a plant, kind of anything. I've been aiming too low. Like whenever I think about reincarnation, I'm like, I would love to be like, like a, a, cat. a cat or a yeah. dog because no, you just be like, an ocean. chill and get spoiled. I w- bitch, I want to be a planet when I get reincarnated. I want to be actual Pluto. I guess the question of like when you're reincarnated, like what are the stipulations for what needs to be your new housing for your soul or your, or your, you know, whatever your brain, mm. not, you know, your thoughts. Well, my only thing about reincarnation is like, where do you draw the line of what gets reincarnated and not like, does bacteria get reincarnated? Like, that's, that's also what I'm saying. Like where, what's the rule book here? Well, like I don't who gets know. to be reincarnated, and when you do get reincarnated, what are you allowed to be reincarnated as? Oh my God, Marvel. Well, okay. So say if you if it was just a theory of consciousness, if a being has consciousness, it can be reincarnated. But then, how can a sentient body of water get reincarnated? Whatever, whatever. But a tree doesn't have consciousness. But I've heard that you can be reincarnated into a tree. Is it just something that's living? So it's carbon matter. Maybe. That's kind of what I thought. So any carbon matter gets reincarnated. Maybe. And maybe that's why maybe the the collection of souls on Earth right now are the same collection of souls that have ever existed on Earth just constantly being reincarnated. Well, I mean, if that was true, then every bacteria in your body is also a soul. And every bacteria has been reincarnated as more bacteria or something else. That's like, disgusting, though. Like, thinking about your body, like, your, the sum of your body is made up of, like, hundreds of thousands of dead people. <laughs> or That's hundreds so of thousands of dead people and make dead up ants. marbles. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, it's... But th- that's like the thing. Like, somebody it's like, mowed their lawn one day and it turned into marble. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's crazy. Or that giant ocean... The Atlantic Ocean yeah, turned into peach. Yeah, but there's bacteria and living, like fish and all kinds of stuff. And the it, algae? You telling me algae gets reincarnated? Maybe. I'm. Bu- I would buy into the theory that things that have consciousness is consciousness. Consciousness. That's definitely. I would say. I would say that should be a, a requirement too. But how do you get reincarnated into a body of water? That's not alive. If it's sentient, it is. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know about that. That, you know, that one was weird to me. The, the uh, yeah, body I feel water like thing. I have a good grasp on reincarnation until you just said that. Mm-hmm. What the fuck? Well, that was part of the, you know, the the article that, that listed that theory, the um, the reincarnation theory. Obviously, the reincarnation theory is no new new theory to anyone. Everyone's mm-hmm. heard of it, but maybe that little stipulation kind of opens up the conversation to what is allowed to be reincarnated or yeah. what you are allowed to be reincarnated as, which mm-hmm. I think. Well, I mean, I want to know. Because if I'm going to get reincarnated when I die and this is out of my control, I would like a say in whether or not I get to be a planet 
or a sentient body I'm, of I'm water. I'm pretty sure that one of the things about being reincarnated is you don't get to choose. <laughs> no. Really, though? No. Really? Well, so is it maybe based on, like, your karma from that lifetime? I think it's based on that and a lot of other things. Okay. Like, karma, um, the people that you interacted with in this life, mm. the, uh, the, the impact you made on certain other people in that life. Like, I think it's how you live your life. Like, you could be born one way or one, like, person, and the way you die is kind of the path that's going to take you into the next being. Mm -hmm. So this is going to sound morbid, but if you die as a, as a child, you're going to be reincarnated as something completely different than if you were to die as a, an old person who has lived an entire life with a, an entire life full of decisions and people mm -hmm. met and experiences. Yeah. No, I agree with that. Yeah. Like if you were a really shitty person, you would get reincarnated as I would imagine something not as fun or awesome yeah. as, okay, well, here's a question. So do you think that a person, because maybe this is a bigger question, but a person is sort of like what you would like to be reincarnated into? Like, is this the highest level of reincarnation? Or I don't is, think like, the per a person is the highest level. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. I feel like just, you know, we talk about aliens and shit and uh, people who say that they don't believe in, you know, anything happening after you die. I'm okay with that. But it's I, I the people that are like total atheists that are like, no, people are the top of everything. We're the top of the top, the best there's ever been. And, you know, there's no higher being. There's no higher energy. Like, to me, that is the most self-centered way to think of the universe in the world. Like, there is no other higher more narcissistic version of viewing life than that and that's all it is it's it's not you even really really you think that we're the the universe's greatest creation us boy there really is no other better adjective for it other than narcissistic because like for you to think even for one second that you and your species is the be all end all of human exists or anything existence in the entire universe like the fact that you're making that statement literally just shows you that your thought process, everything that you've ever known revolves around you and your right. species. And like, you may not be some, uh, you know, alien researcher or someone who, who has gone to outer space or, or someone who literally knows, you know, what, what to look at in terms of like the facts of why we are not the only existing, you know, species in, in, in the, in existence, but just to know that there are a lot of, a lot of, like, there's a lot of, I don't know, I'm trying to, like, get to a point. Like, there's light years and light years and light years of, of space. Mm -hmm. And that's just one little subsection of the entire universe. And, you know, the bigger picture of everything. And we are so minuscule on that. And you don't need to be smart to know that. Yeah. Well, I just, like, it's not that I have a problem with atheists in and of themselves. I have I have a problem with the atheists that are aggressive, we'll who are aggressively like, we're the best thing in the whole fucking universe, and there is no God, and then when you die, fuck, fuck everything. Imagine, though, like, if a brain cell is saying that, and then he just, like, dies and gets excreted out of the giant brain. Yeah. Well, I don't know if this is in your theories, but I think that it is a possibility that whatever you truly believe the afterlife is or whatever you think happens to you when you die happens to you. So, so that if means you, everyone if you, can be having their own afterlife. Well, maybe. Like if you live your entire life and you're like, dude, nothing fucking happens when you die and then it just goes black and then fucking duh, science. That's what happens to you when you die. But if you believe that you'll be reincarnated, you'll get reincarnated. If you believe I, you go to heaven, you go to heaven. I mostly disagree with that. It's possible. I, I agree with you on like a little portion of that in in the sense of like, I disagree that... Wouldn't that be the universe being like, all right, dude, whatever the fuck you want? It would be. <laughs> but I don't think it's like that. I think, I think people will have different afterlives. Mm -hmm. You know, not everyone has the same afterlife. But I think it's more based on like... The, the afterlife you have, which is an afterlife for everyone. You're, some people are just not going to not not have afterlife. So like everyone's going to get one. Um, but I think it's very heavily based on the life that you lived. Yeah. No, I see. I agree with that. That's that's my other problem with people that believe in nothing higher than people or humans. Yeah. Or, you know, the people that reject anything. What's that called? Like a nihilist or something? I don't know. So you have you have like no social conscious because you think nothing matters. Yeah. Like life doesn't even fucking matter because mm -hmm. nothing's going to happen to you when you die, whatever. Um, 
it, it's hard for me to live my life not like feeling like I don't have to answer to a higher power when I die. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I do think that you will be held accountable for the decisions and the choices that you make in your life in one way or another. Yeah, Even if it's not walking up to it's the pearly gates and karma, seeing a bearded man, it's or, like yeah. there's going to be, yeah. Karma or someone, you know, judgment day yeah. or some sort of, you know, y- however your life or afterlife carries mm-hmm. on after you die, I think is in accordance to how you live this life. I think a great I don't example. think you can just be a murderer and no. then, you know, die and then have something super dope happen. Well, I think a great example of that, of that is um, the, the idea of hell really kind of like was painted in a really kind of helpful picture to me when I watched the American Horror Story season of Coven. And when you died and you went to hell, it was basically just like a never ending scene of like you, the, your hell, like the most miserable place on earth. Mm-hmm. But that's your afterlife. On loop. It's yeah. on loop. It's like, so if you hate the DMV so much, you die <laughs> and you're in the DMV forever. And that's your hell. It's yeah. like the infinite loop of your, your worst nightmare. And I think, uh, I think that is like one of the most kind of vivid pictures I've ever had mm. of like what hell could be or what the afterlife could be for someone who has done Ooh, wrong. Oh boy, I mean, you spend a little while in church, you'd have a different picture of hell. <laughs> I know. It's fiery pain, well, yeah, suffering, yeah, awfulness. No. Uh, and I've heard some of that, you know, because yeah. that's like, that's the movie hell. That's right. the hell people talk about, you know, whatever. Um, should we move on to the yeah. next one? Okay. This one is called the universe ends theory. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I've heard of this one. Think of Grand Theft Auto. Mm-hmm. Okay. You're in a specific location and everything is right in front of you. Okay. You can see it. Like it's right there. When you're not in that location, that part of the world disappears. Mm, okay. It only comes up when it needs to. Got it. So it's okay. like if a tree fell in the forest, would anyone hear it? Yes, but the tree does <laughs> or the tree exist. Is the tree exist? even there? Yeah. Uh, so the idea that you're truly the only person in the universe and everyone else is a figment of your world, which is called, I think, solipsism. Mm. Um, I've heard that. Uh, would mean that when you die, the universe ends altogether because you have been yeah. the, so it's the like center. a Truman show. Yeah, Truman show. The uh, the idea that you're the only person, you know. I feel like a lot of people I've talked to, and I always thought that I was the only one who thought this, but when you're a kid, you're like, well, I wonder if I'm the only real person here, mm. you know, and everyone else is just part of this big thing, which is the Truman Show, uh, but solipsism is kind of the centerpiece of this theory, where it's like, and I believe that's the right term, if I'm not correct me, but I think it is, uh, where it's like, everywhere you go, everything you do, everyone you meet, every experience you have, it's all about you, mm. and so not, like right now, if, if that's the case... Nothing is behind me. Nothing is down the street. Nothing, right. you know, is across the world. If you can't see it, it doesn't exist. Exactly. So that I'm when not, you die, the whole universe is I'm gone. not buying into that one either. Neither am I. That seems like an incredibly narcissistic it's, way to But that's narcissistic, it. but it's also, it's less like, it's less ignorant. I agree. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's less ignorant than thinking that the humans are the only species to exist. Well, I mean, it's not wrong in that, you know, everything is a projection of your consciousness, you know? Like, I get that. Yeah. And at that part. Yeah. And that you can have it be a not narcissistic thing. It's just, you know, what exists. Yeah. But like if you li- if you lived your life dictated on that idea, that would be so fucked up. It would be fucked up, <laughs> but it's an interesting thought to have, especially when I don't know, like when like when you meet someone and they say something uh-huh. and you're like, "Wait, how did you know that?" or like, "Why are you saying that?" You know what I mean? Like, wh- what what made you... Because you're living in the Truman Show. Exactly. Like, were you scripted to say that? Are you, are you a robot here that's just like, I am I was supposed to hear that sentence today, and now you're just saying it to me? Like That's wild. That's fucking weird. I'm not buying into that one. You're not? Mm-mm. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much kind of not buying into that one either. All right. This one is called the Life Starts Over Again Theory. Pretty self-explanatory. Okay. Uh, your whole life could have just been deja vu and you continue living in that same life until you die similar to Groundhog Day. No. <laughs> oh God. Wait. So you just keep living in the same, like, okay. Clarify. Is okay. it like the same decade or whatever that, that you're born? The same like time experience? You're just like reliving your entire life over and over and Yeah. Over? Like your whole, like you've already lived your life mm-hmm. and every second of your day of your life now is deja vu of your life that okay. you already lived and died. Okay. So. Or not died. Maybe it's just like you're living in a deja vu reality. Like mm-hmm. you're living in a memory. Okay. So, I mean, if we're talking like parallel universes and whatever you, it, that are infinite, yeah. you would just live your same life in a parallel universe mm-hmm. over and over and over and over. Mm-hmm. I think so. 
So when you die, you just, you wake up in another universe. And so, I mean, well, that would explain parallel universes and infinite realities like that. And why sometimes you have deja vu and yeah. that being the a de- yeah, yeah, parallel yeah. realities. Well, so if you're just living your same life over and over and over again, and you have deja vu about something, it's because you've done it in a past life that yeah. you've literally already lived. That's crazy. You've said that to me before. That right? kind of blew my mind. The reason for deja vu is that you're oh, being reminded. Oh, it's not reminded. the reason. It's well, a no, theory. It's like, no, yeah, no, that, that theory. You've said to me, it's like deja vu means you just relive something that you've done in a past life. Right. Which is crazy. Or, or a parallel universe. Or a parallel universe. Exactly. Um, but because deja vu is so fucking trippy. I love deja vu. I love it. Yeah, I love it too. It's so wild to me how like that feeling it's like so real. Yeah. You know, you're like I've 1000% experienced everything that's happening. Right I now. love deja vu because I personally like to think that if I have deja vu it means that I'm on the right path. Like if, if I, if I feel like I've done something or something going around me, I've already experienced, I'm like, that means I'm doing something right right now. Like I'm, I'm on the right path. When I don't have deja vu for a little while, I get kind of nervous that I'm making bad Do you decisions. actually get nervous if you don't have deja vu for a while? Yeah. Like it's a, it's a like thing. Like deja vu doesn't like scare me or jar me. Like I know some people really don't like it. Yeah. I feel like if it's not happening to me, I need to work harder to make sure I'm doing the right things. Mm. I know that's like super out of fucking well, it's, loopy doopy. You know, it's it's out there, but it's interesting. Well, I feel like because I had like some of those experiences that I call like power of the universe times. I've had those. My mom has had them. Yeah. And uh, I believe in a lot of that stuff. Mm-hmm. Just universe shit. Mm-hmm. Weird fucking cosmic. I love whatever. that. Yeah, I love that you believe in. All I that feel too. like if I don't have those moments of like inexplainable sort of cosmic interaction or some weird bizarre universe stuff i feel like i'm i'm disconnecting from like a, a higher self you know i'm i'm getting too caught in my matrix and i need to like Step you know back. let my soul get free because then once i do that i have more of those deja vu experiences and more so you notice a difference well yeah and so you, i feel like i have to actively be like all right i need to you know get disconnected from the treadmill of life that I'm on. And then I have more of those experiences. The, the more open I am to them happening and, and life being like a nice, easy going. You're paying attention to living yeah. truer to what you're about rather than what life is about. Around right. Yeah. You. you can't get trapped in that stuff because then I feel like you don't have those experiences because you're closed off to the universe. And does it feel like safer? It feels you? better. It was it was a very bizarre thing for me to get used to. Yeah. You know? But then once I am, I'm like, this this feels good, this feels right. I'd rather have these weird experiences than feel disconnected and trapped in the rat race of being alive. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? No, absolutely. Um the rat race. That's that's a good way to put it. Because you're pressured to live a certain way, to make money, to live, to right. to be competitive. Yeah, you're a slave to this exactly. Experience but what, when you like, body. when you realize you need to kind of step out of that. Well, yeah. What is your purpose on earth? And sometimes I feel like your purpose on earth is self actualization. Who am I? What, what is my soul? What do I have to learn mm. in this lifetime to become the best version of myself? And you know, your your place in the universe. Yeah. And that's not your job every day. Your job every day is to make sure that you survive, stay alive, mm-hmm. you know, procreate, yeah. whatever it is. Yeah. And so you get distracted from your true purpose. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it it's, takes time to tap into it and energy to tap into that's it. That's cool. Because then maybe you just keep living your same life until you actually take the time to self-actualize. Yeah. You know? Wow. That's a comforting thought, though. What? Like, you need to stay true to what you're about. Otherwise, you're not living the right life. Hmm. It's like it's comforting. Well, yeah. If you if you live the same life over and over and over again, maybe the universe doesn't let you escape that groundhog you need to day get that until you live the lifetime where you live it right. Hmm. You know what I mean? I would say that's comforting. Well, that's what I think. That's why I get nervous when I don't have these like deja vu and like cosmic things. I'm like, I'm missing something. I'm not doing something right. I need to adjust myself. Yeah. You know? You know what else is comforting, though? What? Ring video doorbell system. Oh, my God. 
to make sure that you will not have a home burglary uh, ever because you have a camera on your doorbell. Ring video doorbell system has been proven to stop bur- burglaries before they so happen, nice. guys. It is awesome. We've been using it for months and months now. We get now. like a nice little jingle. A on nice our little jingle. It Every sounds like a wind chime. The front door. Yeah. Yeah. It's a really cool notification. There's push notifications to your phone, and their advanced motion detection technology protects your entire property with not only just the Ring video doorbell kit, but the Ring of Security kit, which comes with, uh, I believe it comes with this right here, which is a solar panel, so you never have to plug in your ring, and then you have doorbell, uh, which is awesome. The the stick-up cam is part of the Ring of Security kit, which basically means you have the camera on the doorbell, so you're seeing what's at your front door, but you have a stick-up cam to put kind of wherever you want, like Mm -hmm. your back door, your side door, somewhere (laughs) where, you know, people wouldn't expect surveillance, and you have a full 360-degree protection of your house. Mm -hmm. Uh, The weatherproof HD camera is awesome because when you click on the notification, you get to see a live feed, uh, and they even have cloud recording so if you're not home and you can't click on it it will record what it saw two-way audio there's two-way audio you can talk to someone at your door it's uh it's truly like peace of mind yeah. in in a in a system it's like every time we leave town and we hear that jingle we're like oh <laughs> who's at the door it's like probably dog sitter or whatever yeah. uh and so, also you know when your postmate is here before your postmate is even texting you so that they're here. true so true <laughs> what a great point right now you guys can get a hundred your package <laughs> or anything oh, oh package Watch 2K16 big time. Uh, you get 150 bucks off the Ring of Security kit for the Dink Fam right now. If you go to uh, ring.com slash Jenna Julian right now, that's ring.com slash Jenna Julian. Highly recommend it. Awesome system. Uh, kind of a priceless little investment you're making with that. Uh, our other sponsor this week is Texture. Guys, thanks to pizza, we're binge eating. Thanks to Netflix, we are binge watching. And now, thanks to Texture, we are going to be binge, binge reading. reading. Uh, anyone who loves magazines but realizes how incredibly outdated the system of a magazine is, this is for you. Uh, you get all the magazines save you want the trees. in one super convenient place and you save the trees. Um, it's really cool because the Texture app lets you tap in the world's most popular magazines and you can go through all your favorite magazines while they also curate magazine and certain articles that you would like based on the ones you've read before. Uh, I'm a big fan of men's fitness, men's health. Uh, Anything from Bon Appetit to eating well to... I just pick all the food ones. Uh, (laughs) But uh, it's really, really easy. You can get on your phone, your tablet, uh, through the Texture app right now. Texture is offering the Dink Fam Mm -hmm. a free trial by going to texture.com slash Jenna Julian. You'll gain immediate entry to all of the top magazines, including back issues and bonus video content. Start binge reading for free right now when you go to texture.com slash Jenna Julian. That's texture.com slash Jenna. Jenna Julian, so try it awesome. out and let us know what you think because yeah. I know for a while before I started Texture, I missed magazines because I was like, I don't ever read magazines unless I'm at the dentist anymore and those are always like taken up Super by some old. kid. And at the nail salon, they have shit from like 2009 at nail salons. They just never They should buy just a get Texture. One. What if they had Texture and just put it on the iPads on at iPad. a nail salon? I'm sure there's nice ones around here that do have them. Sick as fuck. Some texture. Sick as fuck. Pretty sick, fam. Thanks, sponsors. All right. Thank you, sponsors. (laughs) Moving on to. I feel the, like we can make more than one podcast about this. We, I, I definitely I have do. some on my phone. Too. Yeah, and uh, we actually have somewhere to be like after an hour of this, so we're only able to do, record for an hour right now. So the part two will definitely happen. For sure. Um, okay, this one is called You Wake Up from a Dream Theory. Okay. Mm. Okay. The idea that your whole life is a dream state suspended from a different reality. Ooh, like the Matrix. Sort of. Yeah. But yeah, because you're plugging in. So basically, the true reality that you're in is potentially like millions of years ahead of where you're now living. Uh, in a futuristic time, right? And so and you're when in you one die, of those weird little capsules, with your all capsules, the space and... caps, something. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> and then when you die, you just wake up from being plugged into this reality. And I guess the question about this is like, like maybe maybe the reason you plugged in millions of years in the future to this time, 2016, is because your civilization needed needed to do research hmm. on what went down to solve some sort of futuristic issue, right? I mean, maybe that's maybe that's the thing. What do yeah, you think of that or theory? or maybe they're it's for a higher purpose. Maybe they're they're culturing these people to have these different lifetimes, which you know. It, 
if time is relative, maybe there we're giant beings or something, and you know whatever time goes by mm-hmm. much differently than it does for us. So it feels like actual lifetimes that we're living, but we would wake up from this dream in ten minutes and go, "I know kung fu," like you know Neo style. But maybe they need these people to live hundreds of lifetimes in order to be wise enough to exist in their current world. So we were like these gummy little babies that they plug into matrixes to go five you know, minutes in real time. Yeah, to go live lifetime. all of these lifetimes in order to be cultured enough to live in their existence. So the craziest part about that theory to me is that. I buy it just because of the fact that when you have yeah, a dream. Yeah, I could believe that. I could totally believe that. And I believe it, but I believe it because of the, it's similar to the deja vu. Like, I feel like there's a sensation that humans, including myself, experience, and you know what it feels like so that it translates directly to the theory. Like, for instance, you said when you have a very long dream, right, it, you, it seems like you've gone and, be, you know, hours and hours and days and done all this stuff, and you wake right. up and you're like, I'm t- napped for 10 minutes. Yeah. Right? So that, that idea that you're living a long period of, of time, and it really is just in reality that much time, right. I feel like that's, that's something I can, I can get, on the, get on board with. Right. Like, well, I think another good example, of, <laughs> there's lots of good example of r- the relativity of time. Mm-hmm. But so we've been waiting for how long now for, you know, all of our gods from the sky to come back cross-culturally. We, we're all waiting for, you know, a, a Christ to come back, Allah, I don't know, yeah. whatever. No, yeah. Everyone's sort of waiting because all of their gods told them that they'd come back. Mm-hmm. And that was, you know, thousands of years ago. And, and whoever these sky being people gods whatever could have literally in their minds flown to the planet (laughs) done some shit they've been gone for two weeks they went and had family with their dinner with their family and then they're like "Ah, i gotta go back to my baby planet and it's this giant yeah and we're like we're like we made nukes and like we've done all this stuff we're people we've been waiting for generations for you and they're like dude we just left for like five minutes okay like calm down (laughs) it's only been since like the stone age like calm down five minutes chill guys that's crazy right wow i like that one well, because, well, think of, like, Jesus or whatever, right? So Jesus died, and Jesus would come back. Mm-hmm. Jesus is still Jesus, even though it's been 2,000 years. Maybe for him, he's living in a future society. That's what society. I'm saying. Maybe he's only, like, 40 years old now. Damn. In Jesus years. In Jesus years. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm just throwing shit out there. I hope no one is getting Jesus offended years. by this, by the way. It's well, really not meant to be I offensive. I feel like if you're getting offended by this podcast, of all of our podcasts, like, come on. Go fi- go get True. offended by, like, one of the other podcasts. <laughs> uh, you want to move on to the next one? Yeah. Okay. Grab them right by the pussy. Right by the pussy. Uh, death is an illusion theory. Okay. All right? Buckle up. I'm buckled. Since time is not linear, we just perceive it that way. Right. It would be possible that everything... That has already happened and will ever happen currently exists somewhere, but we can't see it from where we are. Parallel universe. Parallel universe. Okay. Uh, the future in this theory could be right next to you, mm. like right adjacent to the present, just on a different like universe. Mm-hmm. Uh, so when you die, you realize that death is an illusion because you never really die. There's a future, there's a past, there's a present, but they're all coexisting at all times. Okay. Uh, There's no end to life because it's not linear, it's cyclical, and that means that every event that is ever and always happening, sorry, it means that every event ever is always happening and never ends. Okay. So that includes, like this moment, right? Mm -hmm. This this moment is forever going to be happening. But if you jump over to the, the next universe, the parallel universe... The, the moment where you're born is happening. Okay. Right? It's not, it doesn't start and end. It's just, yeah. what do you think of that? That's not the most far fetched thing I've ever heard. It's basically the parallel universe. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. So you would just, you never really die. You never really die. Yeah. You, you, when you die, you basically, you are brought to be aware of parallel universes mm-hmm. by seeing the fact that you die and now you're like, okay, this has been happening the whole time. And so has March 20th, 1995. And so has, you know what I mean? All these dates are yeah. always happening. Yeah. Yeah, that's not the most ridiculous. Thing I mean, it's ever. pretty straightforward. Yeah. And it's like, it's one of those things where it's like, you can't really be like, no fucking no, that's not the case. Like, cause you, <laughs> you don't know. Yeah, you don't know. I have no idea. Have you done any like specific, um, like research looking into the parallel universe theory ever? Cause it's something I would be interested in looking into more. I mean, a little bit, not too much. I have mm-hmm. a good understanding of it, but that's about it. Huh. I also try not to make myself completely crazy. Cause you know how I get. 
when I go down these holes. I'll let it like consume me as a person, which is dangerous. <laughs> yeah. Cause then I can't function. What's crazy to me about this theory is like the decisions you haven't made yet are already made. Mm -hmm. Like tomorrow is already in some universe that has already been lived and done. Every, every mathematical possibility of everything that could ever been chosen or done or did is being done. It's being done all the time. Yeah. Wow. Weird. But then, then it begs the question of like, do you, does, does anything you do have an effect on it? Or are you just like living this predetermined life that you really don't have any control over? It's like, it's perceived control. Yeah, it's perceived control, but everything that can ever happen has already happened. I mean, that's terrifying, but it's also kind of like, eh, can't do any wrong. Kind of relax it. Yeah. It's like, you can't really fuck up because it's already done. Yeah. What else you got? There should be, fuck. I'm just trying to think. Do you want me to read you something? No, no, no. I got one more. I got one oh, more. Okay. Um, okay. This one's crazy. You are already dead theory. No, <laughs> you okay. already died. And maybe you're experiencing your life again because it needs to be reviewed. Maybe because your life may have been reconstructed in a simulator because the futuristic people are looking into the past to solve a problem they're facing similar to the other one. Right. Uh, or this life could be a recreation of the past. And you could, you could have been dead for centuries. Oh, that makes you feel icky. The simulation is the only thing that made you relive or live this life. Maybe we have already collected all the information that our life has to offer, but we don't actually experience it until we die. So that means we're all currently dead. Icky. I don't like that at all. I don't like thinking that I'm dead because I died. <laughs> because I died. I don't like that. Well, I, don't, I mean, but what do you think of it, though? Yeah, I mean, it, it relates to the other I one. I don't like it. It relates to the other one. Yeah. You know, I yeah. get that maybe we're our actual physical self is not a human being in any shape or form and that we're being projected into this consciousness. I think that's a possibility, but I just don't like it. It makes me feel icky. But the idea that your life, like the idea that your life is over and you're currently reliving a life that you are no longer living for, for simulation purposes or whatever is creepy in and of itself because it's like, and we're talking about it. So how meta is this, right? Like imagine if that really is the case and we're sitting here talking about it while we're already dead. I don't like it. I don't like that at all. That makes me feel gross. Okay, we can move on. Thanks. What do you got? I got one called Lanza's Theory of Biocentrism and the Afterlife. Hell yeah. This was cool. Like, there's a whole big article on it that I didn't read all of, which I, like, I don't care, but it's class is the theory of everything and comes from the Greek for life center is the belief that life and biology are central to reality and that life creates the universe, not the other way around. So how did the universe come to existence if life creates the universe? Did life just exist in well, the universe? Well, our consciousness, like, oh, hey. our consciousness makes sense of the world and can be altered to change this interpretation. So we all think, right? Like the universe existed and then life existed. Not we all think. That's a terrible thing to say. You can think whatever you want or you have thought whatever you want. Mm -hmm. But instead, because life exists, mm -hmm. the universe exists. Mm -hmm. So when you die, so does the universe. Mm -hmm. Or when everything dies, so does the universe. So not just you. It has to be everything. Yeah, I guess so. It's cool. It's a cool idea. But I found some other things. This is a little different. Okay. You ready for this shit? Yeah, hit me. These are different beliefs of what happens after you die. This is called Avicii. You ready? Actual, not the musician. Uh -huh. Although now mm -hmm. I think very differently of the musician. Buddhism puts an interesting spin on the afterlife. Since there's no singular being or group of beings controlling your fate or judging your actions, your ultimate destiny boils down to karma. You're in control based on what you do with your life. Naraka, the Buddhist equivalent to hell, is broken into a series of realms based on the severity of one's bad karma. The worst is Avicii. Avicii is a massive cube structure buried deep beneath the ground. To get there, one must have committed at least one of the five great offenses. In a nutshell, murdering your parents or someone holy. Oh, fuck. Ready? One of the most unique 
aspects of Avicii is that your time there is only temporary. Though it is a very long time, it's eons, and suffering is constant, once you've worked through your bad karma, you're reborn on a higher realm. However, you can die on Avicii, though doing so just causes you to be reborn in, in Avicii. Avicii. Oh my god. Also, unlike hell, Avicii isn't seen strictly as some sort of spiritual punishment. Though certainly, you certainly don't want to wake up there, it's better viewed as a sort of spiritual cleansing. Interesting. Isn't that crazy? That's really interesting. So, like, if I just, like, killed a random dude, you and don't go someone to Avicii. else killed their mom, yeah. we're not in the same hell. Mm -mm. But we're both in a bad place. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting that, mur like, I understand murdering someone wholly. Like, that's, I get that mm -hmm. across religions. Yeah. But just murdering your parents is, like, deemed the worst thing. Because it's like killing the people who made you Created life. you, yeah. yeah. It's wild, right? Wild. Okay. This one is called the Chinvat Bridge. Hmm. You may not have heard... I'm reading all of this. It's from weirdworm.com. Weirdworm. Weirdworm. Kermit. Kermit. You may not have heard of Zoroastrianism, whatever, before. But at one point, it was one of the largest religions on the planet. Hmm. Zoroastrianism. There are two possibilities for your afterlife mirroring that of heaven and hell. But before you find either one, you must cross the Chinvat Bridge or the Bridge of Judgment. Those who or lead judgment a, day. Yeah. Those who lead a good life, the bridge is easily passable, broadening as they progress and leading them to the house of song to spend an eternity of peace. Sinners, however, must watch the bridge as it turns um, on its side and becomes narrow like a razor. Then a hideous woman appears to torment them until they fall off the bridge into the house of lies. The House of Lies is something straight out of nightmares. Those inside must eat rotten food or flesh and are continuously tormented while they do so. Also, despite being crowded to maximum capacity, um, each person is trapped inside and feels as though they are completely isolated. However, the House of Lies is similar to Avicii in that it's not the final resting place for the wicked. Eventually, you're granted entry to the House of Song, presumably after you fully understand just what a raging douche you were in life. <laughs> Wow. Urkala. Urkala isn't exactly a punishment so as it is the end of the line. Folks don't leave. There's no lesson to be learned. And no one ever... And nearly everyone but mythological heroes find themselves there. So it's a bit of a downer. In Babylonian mythology, Urkala was the world where the dead existed. One kept their body, but it's still decomposed. Oh, my God. To get your final destination... Uh, you must travel through a series of seven gates first. You're probably thinking, I'm not too keen on doing that or indeed being in this terrible place. And that's all well and good. Uh, but you have no choice. <laughs> there are guards posted at every gate to ensure that you follow the correct path. And just because each one takes an article of clothing, jewelry, or whatever possession you may have had on your person when you die, because, hey, you're dead. <laughs> wow. Things don't exactly improve once you're inside the final gate. Everyone is forced to consume only dust inside a massive dark expanse. Oh, my allergies would be terrible. Seriously. There's no Satan-esque figure to torture you or, indeed, any actual punishment. You just kind of hang out and eat dust while you're rotting. This apparently is supposed to be a parallel to the living world. Ooh, shadow world, like the Demogorgon. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we're guessing the world was a vastly different place in the 6th century. Huh. That's so sad. Imagine being like, all right, I'm, I'm going to die. I'm going to pass on to Dust World to go eat dust while I watch myself decompose. Fuck. No, thank you. Watch myself decompose. And that was a big belief in Babylonian history. <sighs> Fuck me up. The thought of like out of body death, like watching your body die like that or decompose is... <sighs> cringe right i mean you hear all these people saying like yeah I, I died i came back to life i saw the afterlife I, I met a spirit i did this i did that like people have all different kinds of things i've never heard anyone be like yeah i sat in a room and ate dust yeah while well, I that's definitely like a new composed. thing that i've never heard mm -hmm. one of the, can i just like start something mm -hmm. on one of the things that i like really always hated the thought of this is it's morbid but it's it's more like sad it, is that like the thought of dying and being able to like watch in on the people who are just miserable because you died. Mm. Like, you know, when people say like, <clears throat> Oh, she's watching over us. Like right. I get that. But it's like, if you're, if you're dead 
and you died in say like, a, like a kind of an unexpected way. And you're now just sitting there like in a room watching a TV screen of all the people who are left like mourning yeah. your death. Like that to me is Terrible. the worst thing ever. Like the best possible afterlife for me is something that has culminated throughout your whole life and it is something new and it's not like dwelling on the fact that you just died yeah. and kind of just circling around the fact that now you're dead and only on this world. Yeah. Like ideally it would be like morphing into some next part yeah. of whatever everything is. Do you think there are ghosts? Cause I believe a hundred percent in ghosts. Okay. And I like to think that ghosts are people that haven't passed on. Like they still think, have unfinished business. I think ghosts exist, but I think we should do an entire podcast on ghosts. I agree. That let's, should be, that should be it. its own thing, but and it would also, be a good podcast. Yeah, yeah. It's, I think it's a good idea to bring up the fact that we've brought this up in other podcasts, but the short story, the egg, where a guy dies and he goes to heaven and he meets God and, and he's like, what do I do? What happens? I'm dead now. And, and God's like sort of laughing and babying him or whatever and be like, oh, you know, you're, you're a good guy. And then he's like, well, what happens now? And he's like, I'm sending you back. And he's like, well, what do you mean? Like reincarnated? And he's like, well, sort of. He's like, uh, you, you are the only person that there is. You go and you live every single every lifetime. Single life. You're everyone that there's ever been and ever will be. So just he, you. Oh, my God. So that you, you do it until you learn everything. You're every single person. He's like, so you mean I'm Hitler? And he's like, yeah. And you're all the Jews that he killed. And you just go and you, you live one lifetime at a time. That's a great story. Damn. Spoiler alert. So you're that guy that catfished that one girl and you're the girl who got catfished by that one exactly. guy. Exactly. And you're all the girls you checked out and you're... The, those girls' boyfriend. Exactly. But I mean, if you, if you ever sit and think about Crazy. life that way, doesn't that change the way? I'm, maybe you already think this, but it would, ch in theory, change the way that you treat everybody. You know, well, if yeah. you were, if you were that self centered person that was like, everything's about me. There is yeah. no anything. There's nothing else. You sort of treat people however the fuck you want because nothing fucking matters. Like you're the type of person that's just going to go murder everyone on the street because you just don't think anything matters. But you're just matters. murdering and mistreating yourself. yourself. Wow. I like that theory. Right. It's cool. That's called the egg theory? No, no, no. It's a short story. The egg is called is the title? Yeah. Why is it called the egg? Because you're an egg. Like, know. is it because, like, no, why is it called I an egg? I want to know, know that. No, tell me. What is that name? Is someone just like, <laughs> oh, oh fuck, we finished this great story. Now what do we call it? I don't know. I'm hungry. Let's call it an egg. Let's go. All right. This is called Jahannam. If anyone knows why that's called egg, Jah please let me know. I'm kind of frustrated now. <laughs> Sorry, go on. I'm sure it has some symbolism, but I don't want to think about it right now. Right. Like you, you're you're being born. You're an egg. That's it. You're. I don't know. You just we weren't born in eggs. Oh my God, we're not birds. Right. Jahannam. Jahannam is easily explained as the Quran equivalent to hell, but it's a little more complicated than that. Punishment is based on how one lived their life. And see, anytime where something's like cross cultural, cross religion, I'm like, okay, let's not. Yeah, let's not deny that this happens yeah. around the world yeah. and has for centuries and mm -hmm. however long people have been around. Yeah. It's a thing. Like, people, people have wars over religion, but they get along over this. Well, like, think about before there was communications between these gigantic continents. Mm -hmm. How did someone in, you know, rural China have the same beliefs as, like, Native Americans in America? Yeah. Like, some of it's, you know, crazy. That's yeah. like when we talk about ancient aliens and shit and there's like pyramids all over the world mm -hmm. like with using the same sort of techniques like how 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 how, 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 how. how. okay anyways <laughs> punishment is based on when how the one lived their life uh and only the most severe are kept in Jah jahannam for eternity jahannam 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 the most severe sin is the worshiping of multiple gods interesting a running theme in Jahannam's punishments is it'll get better promptly before <coughs> getting worse. That's polytheism, right? Yeah. Uh, for example, one punishment is to have the skin of your body burned off, regenerated, and burned off again. <laughs> Fireplace. Nice. Fireplace. Yes, it, it came back. Yes. Oh, no. It's happening again. <laughs> fire plays a pretty big role in things from being dragged through fire, having to wear clothes made of flame, burning organs. The beat goes on. The person who's being punished the least, since it's all relative to the life you leave, lead, will have their brain boiled from standing on hot coals. Okay. Drag that rat through fire. <sighs> Okay. Um, okay. If you're looking to customize your horrible otherworldly experience, simply commit suicide. The object you chose to end your life will torture you on the day of judgment in jag jag Jagannam. Do it. Though there's a pretty solid chance it will be on fire for the last bit. Do it. Okay. Just do it. 
super fun. Okay, this is called Dayu. Dayu comes from Chinese mythology, the result of Buddhist beliefs mixing with different Chinese folk re religions. Dayu is similar to Nakara, mentioned in the first century, in that it contains multiple hells. But in a nutshell, Dayu is a massive underground maze held deep beneath the earth with different levels or chambers Ooh, for each I hell. I fuck with this. I fuck with this. Though specifics vary, most, most beliefs contend that Dayu is only temporary, but everyone serves their time there with no exception. Uh, I would kill Dayu. I would wreck, wreck through every level. I'd be so good. I would, I would want to stay there, though. I'd just, like, play games. Mazes. <laughs> the chambers that contain each hell are guarded by a judge and contain oddly specific punishments. For example, the Mountain of Knives is exactly what you think it is. Sinners are forced to <laughs> oh, climb God. the mountain and oh. destroy their own bodies in the process. But they can't get to the top. They just die on the way up. The grinding machine is, again, exactly what it says Ooh. on the label. There's also the world of ice where you are frozen and succumb to frostbite. Just in case you weren't having a bad enough time being tortured, there's a kicker. You can die again. Should you give it up to the spirit in the sky a second time, you'll simply be reborn in whatever hell killed you the first time. This happens an infinite number of times until your soul is purified and you are reincarnated in a higher realm. Okay, but imagine... If there was, like, a live feed of this world and you could just, like, watch it like <gasps> it was a Twitch channel. Oh, my like God. You, that's to... sick, Julian. What's no, that you see all far, Oh, that guy got pretty far on the Mountain of Knives. Like, I fuck with him. You know what's si the sickest part about that? I wonder when that? he'll die and come back you know and what, try it again. You know what the sickest part about what you just said is? Hmm. That would be the biggest channel on Twitch. Oh, we would kill it. Because so people many are sick. Imagine the donations. Julian. Where would they go, though? Are they building another m Mountain of Knives? Julian. Better knives, a knife sharpener, a full-time knife sharp sharpener. Julian. Insurance. Julian. What? Sorry. Well, uh, I think this was a good discussion. And uh, as always, please let us know your thoughts on these. Like, and if we if we missed any that are pretty paramount. Well, yeah, I'm sure we, there we is. definitely did. Maybe just like tweet us some. Uh, let's just plan on doing a part two to this podcast eventually. Ghosts. I want to do ghosts. We'll do ghost podcast. That's a good one. I'm like obsessed with some of those things. That's a good one. You've seen ghosts. Right? I, well, oof, let's talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> They're but real. It, it's one of those. Th the thing about ghosts for me is like it's one of those things where I had this belief my whole life where I'm like, no fucking way, fuck you, they're not real. And then a, a couple of experiences, whether it's myself experiencing things or talking to people who I trust, have kind of changed my thoughts. So real. So I think we would have a really good discussion. They're so real. How real? So real. I like, you know, when people are so super skeptical of it and then, you know, you take them somewhere and they have that experience and you just watch their little gears grind, like trying to explain it. And you're like, no, nah, dude, you can't. Yeah. You cannot explain what just happened here. Yeah. You, there, or Mythbusters, whatever that, not Mythbusters, uh, Ghost Hunters. Mm, Ghost like, Hunters, I love yeah. the way that they do, do that show or did in the past when it was like a very scientific way to approach it. Like, yeah, we don't need to freak out, but they definitely <clears throat> have those times where you just can't fucking explain it. Yeah. The fact that those exist around the world, cross culturally, every day, all the time. Come on, man. There's just fucking things in the world that you can't explain. All right. All right, so for the for the ghost podcast, are we going to, like, obviously, we're going to bring our own stories. Ooh, hell yeah. We're going to bring our thoughts, but Ooh, we should also do some yeah. research on what, what's theories, out there. And theories, different and theories stuff. of yeah. ghosts. Uh, I think that'd be great. That'd be a good one. Yeah. We just came up with a podcast idea on a podcast. What? That's some Dink Fam magic right there. Dink, Dink. Dink, Dink. Thank you, Dink Fam. Dink, we love you so much. Dink. Thank you for hanging out with us for another week. Yeah, we love you. Uh, we love you very much. And we'll see you next week, perhaps for a ghost podcast. Ooh. We don't know. We'll have a cool background for that one. Make sure you check out all the sponsor links in the description below. Ring Video Doorbell System and Texture. Really great things, both of them, and we highly recommend them. We can probably do another podcast about other things that happens when you die, because there's so many things. We will. And so, Jenna, at Jenna Julian Pod on Twitter, if you guys are not following, uh, hop on that Twitter, and we respond. Debbie responds. We're always on that thing, yeah. taking ideas and requests, uh, and we just kind of love your feedback on the yeah. podcast. So if you have, you know, for instance, if you have some uh, death after death theories or afterlife theories that We'd you want us to, to yeah, tweet them at us that we appreciate nice. y'all uh, you guys have a good uh, week have a good Monday we yeah, love you yeah bye fam bye guys